Alrighty, let's begin Ewan's bad ending number two, and this time we'll make sure to let the brownie stay. Brownie is friend. Save my, my butt, please, brownie. Thank you. Um, okay, so last time I said nothing to this boy. Today I'm gonna ask about the car keys. I chewed my lip uncertainly, then decided to ask about the keys, just to see how that situation was going. So found the keys this morning? Oh, th my favorite Spencer face. Spencer looked up at me with an unpleasant sneer on his face. Disappointed. No, you're just usually still looking for them at this time. They were in the bathroom. Guess you were roaming around being noisy too much last night and didn't have the energy to hide them properly. And I was already regretting talking to him. I'm so sorry, but I have no idea what you're talking about. And considering you keep them in your room, I'm still not sure how you think I managed to sneak in and get them. Especially if I'm so noisy. <sighs> I sighed softly and got my things. I just go out and wait for Ali. Blech. That's what I have to say to you, Spencer. Um, for this one, I gotta make a spiteful jab at Kara, which I'm totally fine with. You would know about crazy family members, wouldn't you? Considering what your mother is like. Oh, damn! Get her, Nora. I don't know why I said it. I mean, it was true. Kara's mother was kind of hysterical and angry. I remembered her very, very well. But it wasn't something I should have said. I regretted it as soon as I said it. Even more when I saw the look on her face. I didn't even see the hand coming until it made contact with my face. Dang, it was so much more satisfying when it was the other way around. Drayson gasped loudly and tried to get between us, but I pushed him aside as I lunged at her and grabbed the front of her sweater. Don't get in between the cat fight. How could she just hit me like that? You started this fight, Kara! You brought my family member into it, but you're going to get all offended because I bite back? How dare you? In one part of my mind, I was trying to tell myself to walk away, but it was quickly overruled by the rest of my mind, which was furious. Why were humans always like this? Petty, bitter, violent hypocrites. They lashed out at others in hateful, childish ways because they couldn't control their own stupid emotions. That's an interesting thought process for Nora. Why were humans always like this? She thought we were crazy? You stupid cow! You're the reason we had to leave in the first place! You and your stupid rumors. For five years I was stuck in that place. Five years! Okay, this has got to be rule talking through Nora at this point. Nora... She was the reason we were caged in that concrete maze with its choking fumes and smog. She needed a lesson in what happened when you angered the Fae. She and her entire... That's enough! Dang, Brenna jumped into the fray, okay. I started when her hand closed on my shoulder and realized what I was doing. My eyes went wide and I released Kara, stepping back quickly. What? What the heck was that? Brenna's nails dug into my skin as she drew closer behind me. It's a bit stupid to pick a fight here in front of everyone. It won't benefit either of you if you do something foolish here. I... My mouth was strangely dry when I tried to speak. That's right. Of course she was right. It was stupid to pick a fight here. It was stupid to pick a fight at all. There was no reason to get so ragey over something this petty. Jeez, the lack of sleep is really getting to me. I think it's time for you ladies to leave. Even if this one won't be picking a fight with you, I don't mind doing it myself. Dang, thanks, aunt-in-law. You're crazy! Everyone in your stupid club is crazy! Kara, just stop. Let's go. 
Emery grabbed Kara and dragged her away. It was remarkable how terrified of Brenna the other students were. Nora, are you okay? I shot him a confused look. Yeah, she didn't hit me that hard. No, you just seemed... mad. Really mad. I thought... His lips compressed to a thin line, then he shrugged and gave me a sheepish smile. You're incredibly fortunate it's early, and there aren't many students here yet. Thank you... for... stopping me. I didn't even know what I'd been meaning- what I'd been planning to do. Teach her what it meant to anger the Fae? What the heck did that even mean? What was wrong with me? You... are an idiot. With that, she turned and flounced away, leaving me alone with Drayson. I guess all fairies are pretty scary when they get mad. He said it in a joking way, but I didn't smile. That hadn't been like me at all. In fact, that was decidedly not like me. Just snapping like that? Not over Kara, for sure. Those thoughts already fading to the back of mind were so strange. Foreign. I think I'm... going to head up to the club. I need to just get somewhere quiet and collect my thoughts. Okay. I'll go with you. I just nodded faintly as I headed inside. We were about halfway up the stairs when Ewan joined us. Wasn't sure where he'd gone or where he came from, but none of us spoke as we went up the rest of the way to the fourth floor. As soon as I got to the club, I sank onto the sofa and buried my face in the pillow. Are we back? Not yet. Why did I have to run into her first thing this morning? Not how I wanted to start my school day. Drayson quietly caught Ewan up on what happened outside. I just stayed where I was, wondering if I could skip class. I wasn't feeling up to school at all. Ewan joined me on the sofa with a soft sigh. I heard Drayson make an excuse and quietly leave the two of us alone. You okay? Nope. Sounds like that was pretty intense. Well... She's had it out for me from the start, so whatever. People are good at being cruel when they want to be. I finally looked up at Ewan, but his face was as inscrutable as ever. He wasn't wrong, and I guess that didn't just apply to people like Kara. It applied to people like us as well. I guess so, but no matter how much of an idiot Kara is, I really shouldn't have lost it like that. Spencer and I have dealt with stupidity before. It's not worth having a complete freakout. Not to mention how embarrassing that little tantrum was. Drayson looked completely terrified. <sighs> to be fair, the lack of sleep wasn't my fault. And everything happening lately did have me on edge a bit. When Brenna is the voice of reason, you know things are pretty bad. I can't actually disagree with that. Though I kind of wish I'd seen it. Ali once said your temper used to be legendary. Legendary seems like a massive exaggeration. Ewan stood and offered me his hand. What? Come on. Where? Okay, we... we're back now. I know that before, I kind of... I don't know everything there is to know about fairies, but I won't be weird about it again. I know. I left him there and went back to the club. Thanks, Ewan. Appreciate it. Um, am I finding Brenda? Uh, Brenda. <laughs> Brenna. Uh, or Drayson? Drayson this time. Spicy. I didn't want to deal with Brenna, so I was going to corner Drayson. But that meant waiting until after school, because I didn't want it to be in a crowded hallway, and there was no other opportunity. Fortunately, though, he was easy to find. And even easier to bully. Aw, <laughs> poor Drayson. I- I'm sorry! 
We were standing at the top of the stairs on the fourth floor where, fortunately, there was no one else around. I wasn't following you. Yes, you were. You were obviously following me. He completely crumbled at that, covering his face with his hands. I felt almost bad about interrogating him. It was Brenna's idea. Uh, is this some weird Fey thing? I'm one of you, so you guys are going to stalk me around? We... we were just worried. After this morning. You got so mad, and Brenna was really concerned. Brenna was concerned. Yeah, right. But whatever she was really up to, it didn't seem like Drayson really knew about it. Listen, I appreciate the concern, but I don't need bodyguards. I wasn't trying to... I'm sorry! I'm not mad at you, okay? Just please stop following me around and watching me. It's a little creepy. Drayson peeked out from behind his fingers. You're really not mad? Of course not. It's just disconcerting to know someone's following me around, keeping an eye on me. If you want to check up on me or make sure I'm okay, you can just ask. You know? Okay. So we have a deal? No more following me? He nodded. Good. We parted ways after that, and I was just relieved it had been easy enough to shut down that little... bit of weird. Are all Faye this crazy? Or do they just go weird at this time of year? My phone chimed as I was about to start upstairs, and I quickly dug it out of my pocket. Alright. Lots of journaling going on. Okay, last time we looked after the cat. This time we're going under the bridge. Oh, well, that's dangerous. Something... important. From somewhere, in my head or somewhere else, I heard a sing-song voice chanting soft words. A poem. What is it with fairies and poems? From the low white walls in the church's steeple, from our little fields under grass or grain, I'm gone away to the fairy people. I shall not come to the town again. You may see a girl with my face and dresses, you may see one come to my mother's door, who may speak my words and may wear my dresses. She will not be I, for I come no more. I walked to the edge of the bridge, almost in a trance. As soon as my foot hit the soft, mossy ground at the top of the embankment, the cat let out a long yowl and leapt to the ground in front of me. It was enough to partially jolt me out of the reverie, I paused mid-sentence and realized I'd been the one talking in that strange, raspy voice. What? That was... Well, it had been like the sleepwalking, except that I hadn't been sleep asleep at all. In front of me, the cat gave a long, low, angry hiss. I stumbled away from it, confused and a little scared. What on earth had that been? And what was with this stupid bridge? Why was I so drawn to it? What was underneath it anyway? Now that the Spriggan was gone, there shouldn't be anything, should there? I beat a hasty trail back to the house, hoping to beat Allie back. What's with this stupid bridge? Man, if Brenna hadn't been there, in the common route, that Spriggan would have just dragged me off to ferry right then and there. Would have been all over. Um, I'm asking about Ewan's backstory this time. So Ewan's exit from normal life was particularly dramatic? What happened exactly? Danny and Elliot shared another quick look. Well, it would probably be best if you asked him. Not everyone likes sharing their stories. Or having them discuss behind their backs. Good guy, Danny. I resisted the urge to make a face at that remark. I wasn't trying to talk about Ewan behind his back. Danny was the one who brought it up in the first place. I'm not sure he'd answer if I asked. Danny seemed to hesitate before he spoke again. That might be true, but I guess if it's not something he would tell you himself, it's also not something we should tell you. Good guy, Danny. 
Well, I couldn't deny that was probably true. Damn straight, sir. Danny's a great guy. We chatted about nothing special as we went down. Or rather, I listened to Elliot chat about nothing and didn't contribute much myself. Elliot didn't- I mean, not Elliot. Ewan didn't come in to cockblock Elliot this time. Interesting. It was kind of nice since, well, it gave me a much-needed smile. I was surprised to find, when we got to literature, that Ewan had been behind us the entire time, apparently. Because he stepped in right after us, leaving me even more surprised. <laughs> Wait a minute! Okay, I'm not inviting Shelly this time. I wasn't sure I wanted to have lunch with Drayson again, to be honest. Especially if it meant another lunch with Brenna, who wasn't exactly the world's most pleasant lunch companion. And, well, it was a little surprising, but I found myself kind of wanting the normalcy of lunch with Danny and the others. But Drayson was giving me such a hopeful look. I gave him a weary smile. Sure, I'd love to. I couldn't bear to say no, especially since it wasn't Drayson I had a problem with. He beamed at us both. Aw, Drayson, I'm glad you invited Shelly when I didn't. Thank you. Shelly, you'll come too, right? To my surprise, Shelly also hesitated. Though I doubted it was for the same reason as me. But apparently I wasn't the only one who couldn't say no to that puppy smile. Sure I will. At the courtyard? Yes, come on. Let's head up. Shelly and I shared awkward smiles as we fell into step beside him and headed toward the stairs. As the noise from the cafeteria faded, Drayson chattered aimlessly as we walked, telling us about the upcoming art exhibit being organized by the art club, which he was apparently a part of. Okay. Make notes in my journal. And Ewan's watching us almost fall asleep, but this time we're going to text Allie. Well, if Ewan wanted to talk to me, he could have come over, instead of watching me from a distance like some weird stalker. I pulled my phone out of my book bag to text Allie just to see when she'd be back. When I looked up again, Ewan was gone, and a few seconds later I heard the unmistakable sound of his bike as he roared out of the parking lot toward town. Aw. I didn't get a text back from Allie. Instead, she drove up a few minutes later, waving at me through the windshield. With a frown, I got my stuff together and went to get in the car. I wondered all the way home if I should have gone to talk to Ewan. I wondered whose idea all this following me around was. Brenna's? She kind of seemed like she'd be the de facto leader of Stone Circle's fairy trio. But then Ewan had arranged that lunch with her and Drayson. But he also wouldn't have known about the sleepwalking unless she told him. Ugh, I should have just gone to ask him. Jeez. Allie dropped me off a little while later. I wasn't surprised to see Ewan's bike parked in Elliot's driveway. Hmm. Maybe I just... I didn't even finish the thought before Ewan walked out from behind the fence. He spotted me instantly and we both froze. Uh... Hello? Hi. Visiting... Elliot? Ewan shot a glance toward the house. Sure. Not the cat. Ewan blinked in surprise. I just shrugged. <laughs> Alright, we're back around now. Mom, 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 what are we doing? I refuse. Ewan really looked like he wanted to be rescued, and I didn't blame him. I loved my mom, but she could be a terror. Not to mention we did not need a disaster happening. If Ewan's head even so much as wobbled in front of my mom, we'd be done. No! Mom, stop it! I don't want this! They both looked surprised at how vehemently I said that. I bit my lip, hoping Ewan realized I was trying to help. I mean, Ewan has... He gently extricated himself from my mom, giving her a pained smile. I should really get going. If Nora doesn't want me to stay, I should really... Nonsense! Nora is just being rude. She leveled a scathing glare at me. Mom. 
She's just afraid I'm going to embarrass her. You're already embarrassing me. This is why you have trouble making friends, honey. Mother. <laughs> Mother, did I stutter? She beamed and continued to push you into the door, completely ignoring me. Ewan looked twice as miserable now. I trailed along behind them quietly. Hopefully this didn't end badly. Well, there's no avoiding it. When Mom wants something, she gets it done. Sorry, Ewan. Mom left Ewan and I in the entry as she went to put the kettle on. As soon as she was gone, I shot Ewan a slightly concerned look. Are you going to be okay? I think so. Are you sure? This is your chance to slip out. If you don't want me here... I'm just nervous, that's all. I mean... If something happens... Then I'll just... Are you two coming? Ewan shot me a pained look before offering my mom a nervous smile. We're... on our way. He looked even more nervous than I was as he headed to the kitchen. Poor Ewan. I wasn't sure what to do. If I went after him or made a big deal of it, Mom might follow and see something she shouldn't. Maybe I should just... distract her? I think he's fine. Maybe it was just a call or something. <laughs> oh no. There was a heavy thump from the foyer. I jumped up and headed that way. I'll check on him. Welp. I ran to the foyer to find Ewan sprawled on the floor, with his head kind of... not attached. Greenish smoke was oozing out. Ack! I hurried to him and... fretted for a moment before awkwardly picking up Ewan's head, feeling a little faint. I swallowed hard and tried to focus as I made some attempt to, uh... reattach. I didn't know if he was even conscious anymore. His... Eyes were closed. This is so weird. <laughs> oh no! Uh, g go! Nora, is everything... I froze. Mom froze. I was crouching next to you and with his head, uh... Still sort of in my hands. Oh! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well... It runs in the family. Um. <clears throat> Interesting. That was all she said before her eyes rolled back and she hit the floor. Well, I guess I have to forgive the whole my hands were full thing now. Ay! At any rate, I had to try to get this situated before she woke up, and then I figure out how to deal with her having seen that. I just sort of set Ewan's head down, uh, close to his neck. Not something I ever thought I'd have to do for anyone. Then I went to check on my mom. Fortunately, she hadn't hit anything on the way down. I rolled her over and kind of awkwardly flapped my hands as I tried to figure out exactly what to do about this. Behind me, there was a rustling, and I really hoped that was Ewan, uh, getting himself back together. Literally. Ugh. I hazarded a glance back. The head, uh, wasn't quite back in place just yet. Okay, that's weird. I quickly turned back around, feeling a little bit like seeing him with his head off was somehow the equivalent of catching him with his pants down. It was just... weird. Everything okay back there? Just give me a minute. His voice was a little slurred and hoarse. It also had a strange, echoey quality to it. I wasn't sure how his voice even worked still, considering. I mean, which part had his vocal cords anyway? Ugh. Weird thoughts. Really weird thoughts. Mom stirred and let out a soft moan. Panicked, I turned to Ewan and kind of shooed him into the nearby powder room. He vanished in that direction as Mom came to and I helped her up. Nora? What on earth? Oh! I saw... Ewan fell. He was, uh, dizzy. 
and he fell, then you walked in and passed out too. I think something's wrong with the hot chocolate. Is it expired, maybe? Because that's a believable excuse. I thought I saw... <laughs> I smiled at her disarmingly. She looked around the foyer, confused. Ewan is in the bathroom, collecting himself. I think he might be throwing up. Oh dear. She got to her feet carefully with my help. Is he alright? I think he will be. She seemed to have bought that. I should probably throw that hot chocolate out then. Did you drink any? No, I didn't have any yet. Phew. It was pretty amazing how people were able to rationalize the irrational as long as you gave them a little seed of truth. Mom disappeared back into the kitchen and I peered into the family room where Ewan was waiting. I quickly motioned him out the front door. It looked like his head was back in place now. Are you going to be okay? I think so. I am sorry for all this. I shouldn't have come in. No, that's not- I need to go. He practically ran down the driveway and soon disappeared down the street. I watched him worriedly, hoping he would be okay. I hated that something like that happened. Again. I hated that he couldn't even have hot chocolate with a friend without that stupid fairy ability ruining it. No wonder he's always upset. I made a mental note to check in with him tomorrow to make sure he was alright. And in the meantime, I went to go make sure my mother was alright and that she'd really accepted my weird explanation. Because the last thing I needed was her freaking out about my headless friend for the next... forever. Ah, that's okay. We can uh, get Velos to just rearrange some memories for us, hopefully. Um... Alright, well, this time I'm not so anxious to go on the, uh, pudding outing. Do I have to? Really? I didn't sleep much last night. I know! You and your brother were pretty noisy. I thought it was going to have to come break up a wrestling match. So none of us slept well. You owe me. I grimace at that. So, they weren't completely impervious to all the noise. I was beginning to wonder how many times I could sneak out without them realizing. Well... Don't make me order you to, because you know I will. An order? You usually resort to bribery first. Well, we could get cake. If we get cake, will you promise to not even go down the pudding aisle? I suppose. I crumbled. Fine. I'll just go grab a coat. And put my coffee in a travel mug. I'll see you in the car. <laughs> Don't even go down there. The cold air was like a slap in the face. The temperature had definitely taken a bit of a nosedive. It was unpleasant, to say the least, but it woke me up. Clutching my coffee, I jumped in the passenger side as Dad started up the car. Okay, he didn't honk at us this time. And, ooh, putting Ewan in the friend zone now. Ewan and I are just friends. There's no reason to get all weird and protective, unless you're going to start policing my friends. I might, if I don't think they're a good influence. Have you noticed any bad behavior on my part lately? I don't know. You're fighting with Spencer an awful lot these days. I rolled my eyes at that. I've been fighting with Spencer for the last five years. You can hardly blame that on Ewan. I can blame anything I want on him if I don't like him. You have absolutely no reason to dislike him. You're just being biased and judging him based on his looks. Which is probably setting a worse example for me than he ever could be. <laughs> I don't know about that. He's a good guy. And he's my friend. Only. So cut him a little slack. Well... If he's just a friend, I guess I can allow it. I was glad when he finally pulled into a parking space, if only because it gave me respite from the interrogation about my relationship with Ewan. And teasing Dad was only fun for so long. Indeed.
Now to the other dad. Okay, this time I'm ignoring Ewan. I don't think so, pal. I tried to wriggle my way out of his grip to see who was speaking. He didn't release me and I pulled hard at the same time he apparently decided to let go. I let out a short-lived scream as I pitched forward toward the street. Ewan grabbed the back of my jacket, yanking me back toward him. I hit his stupid chest as he wrapped his arms around me to steady me. His brim clattered to the ground at our feet. We stood there for a second, my heart pounding, until I remembered that it was his fault I nearly fell in the first place. Yeah, but he's blushing. I spun around and slammed my hand firmly into Ewan's stomach. Oof! He doubled over, one hand instinctively going to his head. The sound of laughter and clapping from behind him made me freeze in place. I like this girl. She your girlfriend then? No. I eyed the tall redhead that stepped around him curiously. He's wearing a kilt. What? He was seriously the strangest looking person I'd ever seen. Hello there. I'm Logan Croft. Welcome to the Fairy Forest. Croft? I smiled at him as I took his outstretched hand. Whoa, they are really different. <laughs> it's your brother, ain't it? Not quite. Um, okay, so this time... I'm not gonna ask about the Delahan thing. So how did you and Ewan's mom meet in the first place? I couldn't imagine it was easy for a fairy to meet a human and get married. Logan smiled at me as he pulled a cake from the display case. Well, she caught my eye. He kidnapped her. I nearly choked on my coffee. Ewan, you make it sound so terrible. It was terrible. You kidnapped her. Kidnapping is illegal, you know. I gave her back. She left him, and he followed her home. I have no idea what she was thinking when she married him. Hey now, if and she hadn't married me, ye wouldn't be here, would ye? Good lord, fairies. What was with them in kidnapping people all the time? Jeez. Where is your mom anyway? Melanie, she's in full bacon mode in the kitchen. Mom's a whirlwind when she's cooking. It's best not to disturb her. That was a little disappointing. I kind of wanted to meet her. Same. I couldn't help but wonder what sort of person she must be to just walk away from a fairy that kidnapped her. Then marry him. And apparently tame him pretty well. Logan seemed pretty harmless, if a bit daft. I'd gotten it in my head that Faye were, well, awful. But Logan wasn't at all. I looked at the cake he set out, one with chocolate frosting and sugar flowers. It was beautiful. I bit my lip, suddenly feeling... I don't know. Jealous. Jealous of Ewan and his family who understood him. His family that he could talk to about all this while I was struggling to keep it all hidden without anyone to ask questions or anyone to guide me through it. Anyway, I met Melanie one night while riding out with the Sluar. The... What? Okay, I think we're back. Yes. Boof! Um... Okay, I'm not gonna wait for you in this time. What were you talking about exactly? I mean... I've kind of gathered he used to act and everything. He did. Until his fae traits woke, quite suddenly. We always knew it might happen one day. He seemed human for a long time, but, well, he was on stage and he gave me a sidelong look. If and you spent any time around him, you know he can't control his ability yet. I've seen it. He kind of goes in and out of consciousness. Then the, uh, head. Humans always cry the moment something doesn't go the way they expect. You lived with him long enough to know. Well, Ewan hasn't gone on stage since. It's really too bad. He was so fun to watch. 
So much talent. A voice as beautiful as his mother's. And now no one gets to hear it. He sings? Logan gave me a long, curious look. Well, if he hasn't sung for ye at least once, I guess you're not as special to him as I thought. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? <laughs> it means he's like, well, I guess he's not really that interested in you if you haven't heard his dulcet tones. Okay, this time the bottom one. Everyone has a right to survive, but not to kidnap people, hold them against their will, and whatever else they intend to do with me. Perhaps, but what have you agreed to go? I never agree to anything. Perhaps you didn't know you were agreeing. If I didn't know I was agreeing, it wasn't an agreement. They could also have just sealed off your memories of it. How is that any better? Listen to me, Nora. I don't condone any of this. But fairies have their own sense of justice. And even if it doesn't always align with a human sense of fairness, it's there. What makes sense to you isn't the same thing that makes sense to them, and... And what? Because their sense of justice is different, I should just respect it? Even if it means letting them take me away? I didn't say that. And I don't think it either. Brenna, if you knew what I was, why didn't you tell me before now? Brenna shrugged. I was really hating how calm and casual she was being about this whole... <clears throat> excuse me, this whole thing, but... I guess this was just a run-of-the-mill thing for them. Something that apparently happened all the time. I was waiting to see. To see what? How things turned out. How determined you were. How useful you would be. I just wanted to see who you really were before I made up my mind what to do about you. I took a long, slow breath, trying to convince myself she'd make mincemeat of me before I could strangle her. Fine. Fine. I grant that you were under no obligation to tell me anything. But I'm unagreeing to this now. How do I reverse whatever they've done to me? You're saying that even if you promise, you want to break that promise. I don't see why I should be held to a promise I don't remember. And we don't know for sure that I agree to this. We don't just take people. There has to be an agreement. Then why don't I remember it? Because they probably blocked your memory of it. Humans have a way of wiggling out of their promises. Just like fairies do when they don't want to keep theirs. He leveled a scathing look at his dad. It probably happened when you were pretty young. And you may not have even known about it, because that's how these things work. So they took advantage of me before I was old enough to know what was happening. They erased my memory of it, and I'm supposed to keep my word as if all this is fair. It's not like a life in fairy is bad. You left? Well, that was enough of this. Dad, if you don't want to help us, maybe I should go ask Mom what she thinks about all this. <laughs> and we're back, without the whole chasing me down into an alley. And having hugs and things like that. Fine. Okay, another new option. I took a deep breath. Thank you. I really appreciate this. I wasn't really expecting all this today, but... I'm grateful for this help. Tell your dad I said that. Don't thank him yet. Save it for when it works. You know... You almost sound like you don't trust your own father sometimes. Ewan looked away, chewing his lip. I instantly regretted pointing that out. It seemed kind of... rude. He... behaves himself because of my mother. But he's a fae. Brenna, too. I don't forget that. You shouldn't either. Ominous words are ominous. Okay. So the changeling ritual worked. And this is the same as what I did for the good ending. 
Oh, didn't I? Oh, no, I think I shouted for help. Never mind. Why did I think I desperately tried to escape? The tall, terrifying figure held me close as I struggled away from him. He wasn't holding me too tightly. I managed to twist out of my grasp and throw a wild kick at his shins as I staggered away from him. Who are you? You really don't recognize me. Am I supposed to? The stranger took a hesitant step toward me. For a second, he reached out and I flinched back. The stranger stepped back as well, his hand dropping to his side. I looked up and caught sight of the sad look on his face. I asked who you are! Dad did say your memories might be a little hazy at first. I didn't expect you to completely forget me. Now that I was really looking at him, he did seem somewhat familiar. I put a hand to my head as I tried to remember. Why was it so hard to remember? He was... This person was... Yorick? Is that you? Relief washed over Ewan's face. You remember me now? Yes. Of course I remember you. I mean, I forgot there for a few minutes, but yes, I remember now. The fact that I'd forgotten him so completely was actually sort of terrifying. You okay? I think so? Two coffees? In one day? You're totally going to stunt your growth. At least mine isn't already stunted. I glared up at him. The only reason you're not short is because your dad is also a giant. My dad is normal-sized. I hesitated. <laughs> so no date this time. Interesting. Okay, so this is where we make a save once again. This is our final choice for this run. So this is when we notice all the cryptics after our changeling ritual. And last time we ignored them, because that's what you do. So it's either going to be Tree Lady or Alfred. So I guess let's find out who's eating us today. Ugh. Seriously? I spun around glaring, but my eyes went wide when I saw the shriveled creepy lady. Yep, Tree Lady this time. I staggered back, my foot nearly slipping off the curb. She reached a thin, bony hand my way. We can't have you remembering secrets. Her long fingertip grazed my forehead, leaving a streak of cold in its wake. And then she was gone. She didn't fade slowly out of sight or anything like that. She was just... gone. Winked out of existence like she'd never been there. And I was left gaping after her, a spectacle for bystanders to stare at. I rubbed my forehead, trying to get that cold spot to go away. What the heck was that about? A strange discoloration on my hand caught my eye, and I pulled it away from my face to examine it. It was... red. Blotchy. At a glance, it looked like blood, but it was part of my skin. I rubbed at it, but it didn't go away. What? Uh oh My vision warped. The red stain spread, climbing up my arm. No! What had she done to me? I staggered back against the lamppost, ignoring the whispers around me as I desperately rubbed at my arm, trying to wipe the stain away. What is that? What is that? Oh boy. My vision twisted more and the voices rose to shouts. I looked around desperately, terrified. What? What's happening? There were faces, twisted, leering. And somehow a laugh bubbled inside my throat. It spilled over and I giggled madly even as I fled, terrified. I ran down the sidewalk and the world around me blurred. I didn't know where I was going. I couldn't see anything but the stain on my hands growing, spreading, engulfing my body as the faces leered. The ground fell away and I staggered forward, arms flailing as I reached for something to grab onto. I gagged at the taste of copper and mud. And even then I kept laughing. Laughing. Couldn't stop. I couldn't... 
As the world faded, somewhere between the laughter and the red stain, the white-hot pain, I remembered. If a burnt spirit touches you above the heart, you die. And if she touches your head, she invokes madness. I shut my eyes and the twisted world faded away to nothing. Oof. She drove us crazy and we ran off into the street and got hit by a car. Dang. Well, that's quite an ending. Oh, let me not be mad. Not mad, sweet heaven. Keep me in temper. I would not be mad. Indeed. Okay. What was that one called? The one with the white hand. All right. <laughs> well, I guess next time we're going to make it to fairy, so... Fun! Man, there was a lot in that bad ending. I think the actual last choice is what triggers it and not all the choices before, but at least we got some of that alternative scenes out of the way when we start bad ending number three. So yeah, good, good, good stuff. That being said, I will see you for bad ending number three.